shoots us down. You become an instrument of terror. Peace. I said I'll Geschiedenisleraar Mustafa El Amin, gelovig moslim, trots op Amerika, was eens een extremist die Amerika haatte en de planken als de duivel zag. Zijn metamorfose is het onbekende verhaal van 2 miljoen zwarte moslims in Amerika. Mustafa El Amin woont in Newark, New Jersey, een overwegend zwarte stad, een half uur rijden van New York. These are like the projects I grew up in during the 1967 racial riots of Newark from about 9 or 10 years old. And the frightful thing was on one of these days, we hear a bang on the door while the bullets are flying to boom, boom, boom. They kick the door open. And uh, I remember two National Guard, actually three National Guardmen, um, they were uh, white Americans, and uh, uh, they kicked the door and they had what I understood to be machine guns, you know, Uzis. In later years, when I heard the uh, uh, teachings of the Nation of Islam about white people being devils, I'm, I'm almost 100% convinced that this flashed into my mind in terms of white men kicking our door down, pointing uh, machine guns at my, at my, my family and my mother and, and all of these things. and. And then connecting it to that. You've been living so hard day by day. It's time to make a change, and Islam's the way. If you want order, Islam's the way. It's a new day. Change your mind. What you do and say, a new world order. This place here uh, is Master Muhammad. This was uh, temple number 25. This is where we, uh, the majority of us came through uh, during the days of the Nation of Islam. I was 16 years old when I joined and received my ex. Whatever your last name was, which my name was Robert King, your last name would be dropped and you would be given an ex. You did not know your true name that you had before you were brought to America, that you had in Africa. So King or Jones or Smith was incorrect, so it was crossed out. Because it was the master's name. Because it was the slave master's name. But you, you could keep your first name because that was your given name by your mother. I legally changed my name around 1983 or so. And El which means truthful and honest. When I saw that name, I said, that seems like something I would want to be. And Mustafa means the chosen one. And I felt that I was chosen to begin the process of generations of Muslims in our family. Hi, Mustafa. How you doing? Oh, 
okay. How you Good. doing? That's the first thing. Oh, thank you, thank you, okay, thank you. I'll leave it out. When I left the church to become a member of the Nation of Islam, my mother was very disappointed because she has such a commitment to Christianity. We are so much alike. He firmly believes what he believes. I firmly believe what I believe. And we don't rub arms. Now, for an example, when we have our dinners, like Thanksgiving or Christmas and whatnot, I know he doesn't eat pork. He loves cabbage. I cook a pot full of cabbage without pork. And I cook one with it. I cook the foods that he eat, his family eat, and I cook uh, food that we eat. So I have a pot of food with beef and turkey, and I have a pot with pork. You know, one thing about the Nation of Islam, they would say, just look around. All people have an image of their God or of their leader that looks like them. Except you, black man. We go to your house, and you have a white image of someone called Jesus, and you're saying this is God. And at the same time, you had Dr. Martin Luther King and the other groups which were, which were the nonviolent. So the Nation of Islam would uh, criticize that, say, that's what Christianity teaches, that if someone slap you on one side, give them the other side, you know, and, 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 and the logic was, no, brother, in a different world, that humility would be fine. But in this world, if somebody hits you on one cheek and you give them the next one, he's going to try to kill you because they're going to interpret that as weak. It's like a hound that smells blood. Yeah. In de sloppenwijken van de grote steden is de zwarte vorm van islam geboren. Racisme, armoede, werkloosheid en gebroken gezinnen waren de voedingsbodem. De Nation of Islam bood een alternatief voor de uitzichtloosheid van het bestaan. Economische onafhankelijkheid, orde en discipline, zwarte trots, een eigen zwarte staat. We did not accept ourselves as Americans. We didn't believe we should pay taxes uh, to the American government. We preached and believed in the fall of America, that there was a day that was coming when America would be destroyed for its crimes against black people. We believed that and that the black people would survive. Uh, we despised the American flag. We saw the red as the blood of the black man. Theologisch gezien was the Nation of Islam een vreemde secte. Volgens de Nation was Allah verschenen in de persoon van een man. En was Elijah Muhammad, de leider van de Nation, de boodschapper van Allah zelf. Het was considered blasphemy by the majority of Muslims in the world. Because along with that theology of man as God and Elijah as the messenger, there was also the, the, the concept of man as the devil. So if you had man as God and, and, and man as the devil, that man was the white man. So the, the, the black man was the God, the white man was the devil. So again, that was, that was a blasphemy because it was, it was said and taught in the name of Islam. Toen Elijah Mohammed in 1975 stierf, nam zijn zoon, Wallace D. Mohammed, de leiding over. Dat had diepgaande gevolgen voor de Nation of Islam. Want Wallace D. had in Egypte de ware leer van Islam ontdekt. Hij brak met de vreemde theologische opvattingen van zijn vader en de extremistische boodschap van zwart nationalisme. Onder leiding van de zoon keerden 2 miljoen zwarte moslims de Nation of Islam de rug toe. It was one of the most unique things that I've ever read about in history myself. Um, in the sense that here you had thousands of people who believed uh, with all 
that they had. They walked away from their parents. They walked away from their children. They walked away from their friends for disbelief and would uh, walk through blazing fire for this belief in the nation of Islam, the black man is God, the white man is the devil. But then for someone to come up and say, no, this is not Islam. This is, this is what you've been believing in is not true, is not right. And to have that whole organization, thousand, to follow that leadership and to make such a transformation is uh, mind-boggling. Maar een kleine groep, onder leiding van de charismatische demagoog Louis Farrakhan, bleef hardnekkig vasthouden aan het oude gedachtegoed van de Nation of Islam. Farrakhan wordt in Amerika nog steeds gezien als de woordvoerder van zwarte moslims. How wrong is that? That's 100% wrong. Um, uh, there's over 2 million, 3 million African, of 3 million African American Muslims. Uh, where in the Nation of Islam with Minister Louis Farrakhan, you may have 15,000 uh, members. When the change came for the Nation of Islam, and Minister Wallace D. Muhammad became the leader, there were certain things that he said that registered on me as if I had heard them before. When it was specifically the concept of God. God is, is, is more of a spiritual being than he is a physical being. And he created all human beings the same. But I'll tell you, I had to do some soul searching. And I would just say, in all sincerity, it was only the mercy of God that I can really explain how I was able to change. Okay, one more time, everybody together. You see what it was a gradual stage of development into this song. As we matured, as the world changed, as we grew, and then we could grow into Islam. And it's got to be. Thank God for my for, for the change that I was able to make and for the thousands of others who came through the nation of Islam and who embraced Islam under the leadership of Imam Wafid named Muhammad, who himself became very patriotic in a rational way and moved us away from that kind of mentality that we had. Because right now, we could very well have, in the nation of Islam, have become instruments of terror and if not instruments of terror, most certainly the strongest sympathizers of those who attacked the World Trade Center. And some way have been applauding what had happened to it. But these people who did this in the name of Islam, they are wrong. They should be condemned by us. And I believe that they're burning in the hellfire now. Tanisha, hold up for a minute. He can't, he, Tyree couldn't just walk. When this terrorist attack happened on uh, September 11th, some of the parents at the school came and took their students, their children out right away. And it, at that point, it really dawned on me <laughs> that my children are somewhere in school and uh, what this may mean. But not only because of the terrorist attack, but because they're Muslims. Uh, I, I was concerned about how st other students, or even uh, adults for that matter, will react to them because they are Muslim. Okay.
hard. It's like kind of hard, cause since that um whole bombing thing, like people be asking me a lot of questions about it and stuff. Really, what kind of questions should people ask? Oh, this one kid, he said, "Are you related to some of the latter?" They're just extremists. Oh, uh, they're like mu they're not really Muslims. They just join because Muslims don't do that, don't do things like that. So they're not really Muslims. They're just pretending to be Muslims. <laughs> outspoken in her way and she but she said something uh that uh, disturbed me she said uh, daddy somebody said that um maybe we should change our names back to christian names so that um the people won't think that we had anything to do with that well what's these fish called i don't know their names these look like guppies there were some uh, news media coverage of women uh, being harassed Different. You could see that some, um, like I said, some co-workers would express concern, you know, for my safety. Others would just have a look of, well, I wonder if that's the same uh, religion that she's practicing. You know, it, are they all the same or, you know, is it them over there and, you know, the group, the Americans what? over here? It makes it more Two, difficult. Two, three, four, five. <laughs> Ook in Amerika zelf bestaat er een kloof tussen de moslims onderling. Zwarte moslims hebben weinig gemeen met Arabische Amerikanen, die wel winkels hebben in zwarte wijken, maar er niet wonen en er niet naar de moskee gaan. Rijke Arabische moslims bieden hun zwarte broeders wel steun aan, maar onder voorwaarden die zwarte moslims niet accepteren. We would have to give up our mind, give up our freedom of thought, and give up our willingness to look to the philosophies and ideals of America and see how that meshes with Islam. Because many of them don't want to do that at all.